adamantly shaking his head no. Listen, and, and uh, Adrian having a conversation after that turnover by Giannis. And Adrian telling us prior to the Bucks made a move that sent shockwaves around the league as they fired head coach Adrian Griffin before the All-Star break, a move we've rarely seen from NBA bottom feeders, much less the league's top contenders. So with tons of speculation flying around, I think it's clear that the Bucks have made this decision for one reason and one reason only. They're going all in. What's up guys, it's Colin from Next Man Up, and today I want to talk about Milwaukee's decision to let Adrian Griffin walk, not even with half a season of head coaching under his belt. As we know, the Bucks made a splash this offseason to bring in Damian Lillard, who, say what you will, is still an all-star level point guard for the Milwaukee Bucks. But with all the buzz on Damian Lillard, the move that went under the radar was Milwaukee firing the same coach that led them to the championship years prior, Mike Budenholzer, seemingly because of their first round exit at the hands of Miami, but he also had his own issues in the past. What I mean by that is that Budenholzer was the type of guy that wouldn't really make in-game adjustments, he wouldn't really call timeouts in the right spots, and honestly, he just wasn't as good of a coach as he should have been with all that experience under his belt. But with that being said, he was on the way out and the Bucks organization was not scared to say that the opinion of their superstar Giannis Antetokounmpo would influence their coaching decisions and he's one of the main reasons that they brought in Adrian Griffin, the longtime assistant for the Toronto Raptors. Going into the year, there was a ton of promise around this Bucks team. Obviously, the addition of Dame was nice, but they brought back a lot of that championship roster with a new head coach. But with that being said, we kind of saw the cracks emerging as early as day one. When Adrian Griffin came in, he brought in the former head coach of the Portland Trailblazers, Terry Stotts, as well. Stotts seemed like the perfect assistant for the new head coach, Adrian Griffin, considering his experience, but things would quickly go south not long after. During a practice early in the season, Griffin and Stotts would get into an altercation because Griffin was spending time chatting with his superstar duo of Damon Giannis instead of stepping into the coach's huddle. Stotts' aggression clearly must have set off Adrian Griffin because Stotts was fired no less than two days later. That's a harsh reaction. It seems to me that there was much more to the situation than what was reported. I mean, I don't think Adrian Griffin is the type of guy to fire one of his co-workers after one small altercation. But with that being said, there have been rumors that Terry Stotts and Damian Lillard have kept a really good relationship even after Stotts was fired from being the head coach over in Portland. So I think it's fair to say that after this whole situation went down, that Damian Lillard probably wasn't very happy. And after all of that, mixed with some other factors, the Milwaukee Bucks started this season really slow if you remember. But with that being said, we've seen them pick it up, but during that tough stretch in the season that we already saw, veteran presence and honestly one of their best players, Bobby Portis, had a moment where he confronted Coach Griffin about the team's defense. To keep things short, Milwaukee's defense was and still is really bad. The biggest problem being that instead of having Brooke Lopez sink back in the pick and roll defense where he could contest shots and get a lot of blocks, Griffin wanted Lopez to rise up to the perimeter to guard whoever his assignment was. If you guys know Brooke Lopez's game, you know foot speed really isn't his forte. So as we saw earlier in the year, he would get beat off the dribble time and time again. And if you guys know Bucks forward Bobby Portis, you know he's a very expressive guy, so he wasn't scared to say what most Bucks fans were thinking, and he went up to Coach Griffin and told him that this style of coaching his defense was stupid, and that the Bucks needed to stop doing it altogether. Unlike most coaches at the NBA level, whose pride often gets in the way of their decision making, Adrian Griffin agreed with Bobby Portis and he made the adjustment, which in turn has bumped Brooke Lopez back into the top three in blocks per game this year. And as much as I respect a coach who listens to his players, I think it's a little nerve wracking for fans that you bring in Adrian Griffin who is well touted for his defensive mentality and your defense is bad and he can't see such a clear adjustment until it's brought to him by one of his players. I think that would make me a little bit nervous if I was a Bucks fan. I do want to keep in mind though that this year was never going to be easy for Griffin. It's his first year head coaching and he had to deal with a lot of superstar personalities that hadn't even had time to adjust to each other, much less a brand new head coach. 
And even with that defensive adjustment that I mentioned being made, there were clearly many more problems with this team, especially early on and especially on the defensive end. I mean, up till now, this team is still bottom 10 in defensive efficiency while boasting these defensive stars like Giannis, Brook Lopez, and Bobby Portis that I've mentioned. They have all these guys on the roster and they haven't been able to put together a good defensive game in what seems like a long, long time. And I don't think the Bucks moved on from Adrian Griffin because the team had some struggles on the defensive end. That's not the full reason, because through this struggle, I think they expected to see first year Adrian Griffin change up the rotation, try some guys in. Hey, even bring in some guys from the G League. The Bucks have some guys on that squad. But with that being said, Griffin hasn't changed much with this rotation at all. And his mentality has been relying on his team to outscore opponents to win games, which with all due respect has been working to a certain extent, but I think we know clearly isn't the answer and it isn't what makes up a championship team. So with the team's defense at its worst in the Giannis era, a predictable disconnect between coach and Damian Lillard and Bobby Portis having vocal issues with Adrian Griffin, I think things were crashing down from the inside before us on the outside even really knew it. I also think Griffin's firing is a little bit bigger than just his performance as a coach. I mean, look at the way this team is built. The Bucks timeline with Damon Giannis together is clearly going to be short. These are some guys that have contracts that aren't going to last forever. They're guys, especially in Dame's case, that won't play forever. So Milwaukee can't waste time, and that's why they opted to fire Griffin before the season's even over. The Bucks are in win or go home mode, which I think the fans are very appreciative of, and they're going to have to do that with a new shot caller. Luckily for Milwaukee, the 2016 Cleveland Cavaliers provide a pretty good blueprint on how to get that done. When the Cavs fired David Blatt back in 2016 with LeBron James on their roster, they brought in Tyron Liu. They brought in a former player who was respected by the current guys, despite him not really having the best coaching resume. And Tyron Liu really let the talent play to the best of their ability. And I think that's what Milwaukee is looking for and their candidate going forward. You guys all know that the NBA world moves very, very quick. And the rumors are that Doc Rivers will be in a Milwaukee. So let's assume like he is the coach. By the time you're watching this video, he might already be. So if Doc is the call, the Bucks are bringing in a coach who has won at the biggest stage in basketball, and he's coached some of the league's top talent in his time. With that being said, Doc is another coach like Budenholzer who's going to have his own playoff hurdles to jump, but I do think it's fair to say that Rivers is already a much more established and probably better coach than Adrian Griffin would be this season. So this is going to arise a lot of questions. I think there is a certain piece of morale that is lost when you fire a coach less than halfway through the season. I mean, there's no doubts there. And no matter who they bring in at the new head coach, he's going to have a lot of room to work and he's going to have a lot of work to do. This Bucks team needs to win right now and anything short of a championship is going to be considered a failure by pretty much their whole fan base. And it goes without saying, especially after recently seeing how well Joel Embiid has really been playing, that the 76ers are going to be the Bucks' top contenders in the East outside of the Celtics. So hypothetically, we'll see the Bucks match up with the 76ers in the playoffs. And Doc Rivers has proven that he can't really beat the teams that he needs to in the playoffs. So if he goes up against the 76ers, are you confident with Doc Rivers on your side? I'll leave that up to interpretation, but I don't know if the answer is very clear. I think one narrative that the media is going to revolve heavily around is the impact of superstar players and how their thoughts and decisions make up a lot of what front offices do in the modern NBA. They brought in Adrian Griffin to make Giannis happy, and it doesn't seem like Giannis is very happy right now. When you look at him on the court, when you look at them win games, but struggle against some of the NBA's worst, like the Pistons, he looks upset, and we've seen guys like Damian Lillard not even look like they want to be there. So I think they were a big driving factor, and Adrian Griffin popping on the way out as well. And there's no doubt that what they want will be what goes when it comes to finding a new head coach as well. I'll leave it up to you guys if you think superstars should have that much stake in their team's front office decisions, but there's no doubt that we're seeing it live that these guys mean much, much more to their front office than they ever have in NBA history. So with all the information I gave you in this video, the Bucks are moving on from their head coach at this point of the season, and it may surprise people from the outside, but it seems like it was the move that the players are on board with, and as I mentioned, maybe even influenced. So I do think it's the right call at the end 
end of the day. All right, I'm done talking about Milwaukee. I'm out of here. Let me know in the comments if you think Doc can bring this Bucks team to the finals, assuming he's the guy. And if you think Adrian Griffin should get a shot coaching elsewhere. This was Colin from Next Man Up. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.